Okay, I just checked all my snares. I didn't see a single rabbit track. Like I told you guys before, the population is not good here, and I've taken out three rabbits uh, in snares in the last two days. And I've uh, taken out two rabbits with the 22. So that's a total of five rabbits taken out of this area on a low population area. So I'm going to leave it out for maybe one or two more nights, and then I'm probably going to pull up these snares. I'm going to call this uh, experiment a success. However, this is the, my new way of setting rabbit snares. And not only that, I have two new mods to show you. And a new way of setting snare. So I hope you stay tuned, enjoy this video, hit the like, subscribe, share. I'm trying to reach 10,000 subs. So if you guys can help me out with that, it'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, but first, I'm going to show you a video of how I feel when somebody uses a system and has great success. And he's the one of the co-creators of the, of the toggle, is Gary Benoit. So uh, in this video, take notice Karen. She's standing in the kitchen, and as soon as I... Uh, I uh, kick in here. It's it's old footy, so uh, poor quality, but you, you get the gist of it. This is how I feel uh, when we, we try something new and, and it seems to be working. <laughs> and that's how I feel. So somebody asked me how I tie on the rabbit snare. And I, the way I was tying on was a fishing knot, the way I tie on like a dry fly or whatever, right? I can't remember the name of the knot. You just wrap the, put the string through the eye of the hook, wrap it over about six times, and run it back through the little loop that you created, and cinch it up. Um, I was only doing it four times with the, with, the, with the string, and it proved to be effective. And I was doing it because Elwin said, Charlie, you can't have a fisherman's snare without a fisherman's knot. But my good friend, Elliot Burke, says, Charlie, why don't you just attach the snares like you, uh, like you do your fox snares, loop to loop? So there was a comment under the last video. Someone was asking me to show how I tie on to the snares. I am going to show you exactly how I'm doing it from here on. And the reason why is because once the wire gets... Uh, use like beyond use once it gets a hard kink into it then I can change the wire and without having to go through the trouble of re re putting a loop in through the, the toggle and all that stuff the way I got it now is set up for one time failure as soon as it fails I gotta cut a new string the way I'll do it in the future I'll never have to do it that way again so what I have now <laughs> first mod is a loop end that I'll tie the snare to Okay, I hope you can see it. It's a looped in. And this is the second mod is toggleless. Just a loop. And I'll show you how that's gonna work. And then I have a trick for setting them in a new way. And I'll show you how that's gonna work. So all you do is you take the uh the end of the snare. I hope you can see it. Is that coming out good? So I got a little uh tail on the end of the snare. Right, so for, for this purpose, I'm gonna pinch down that tail. I'm gonna pass the first loop through the snare. Right up to the knot. So all I did was take the, the, the snare and pass it through there. Then you open up this loop and you pass the snare through it. And what you've created by doing that is a loop to loop. So now anytime this wire 
gets damaged, I can I can just replace the wire and the string is still good. Right? So it makes sense. I'll uh, I'll show you one more time with snow backdrop. Okay, you come along and your and your snare is damaged. It's kinked too hard because you caught a rabbit in it. To change it, all you do is open up that first little loop, pass the snare through it, and that fast is gone. So now to tie on a new snare, it's just the opposite, right? You got your loop, you put it through the eye of the snare, bring it all the way up to the uh, to the to the knot, then pass the rest of the snare through it and cinch it up. So a loop to loop connection. How is that? And like I said, we got a toggleless uh string now, fisherman snare, and I'll show you how that's gonna work. Okay. Oh hang on now get a I'll get a happy knee. So how am I gonna attach this snare? It, it's it hang on, I gotta get myself some operating room here. Alright, so we got a, uh, a duck pole. We're gonna say that the rabbits are running underneath here. Look, we even got rabbit tracks. Oh gee, a rabbit run underneath there. So this is this is the uh, toggleless wire. All I'm gonna do because this this tree has has branches onto it, it won't come loose. I'm gonna take the loop. I'll, I'll make sure there's no twists into it. I'm gonna take the loop, pass it around the tree, then the snare goes through the loop, and then I cinch that up. Because there's branches onto this, I know there's no way that the rabbit is uh, going to get anywhere, you know why? But not only that, if the ground is frozen, I uh, this is now my pinch pole. Hey, check this out. Pinch holes don't have to go into the ground. It could go into the. Uh, they can go up this way if need be. You know. This need to be up a little bit higher. Four fingers. <clears throat> and then you can take some of the extra string here and just get it up and out of the way like that. Not an issue. But that's that's a quick, simple, easy way of uh, of, of uh, tying on the snare now, eh? Perfect height. And I'll just add a uh, couple of guy sticks, and and we're in business. Now the ground is not is not frozen today, so it's easy to place in the guy. Well, maybe it's a little frozen. Oh, you know, and just that quick, that simple, that easy. We we have a, a rabbit snare in place. I don't know if I'm going to leave it there. I don't, I don't see any rabbits passing through here. So I'm not going to leave it there, I guess. But now, the rabbit gets caught. Bang all. This, this comes close on him. When he pulls and cinches up this, bang all. He pulls that out of the pinch pole. And now, bang all. He's on the rope. And because the rope has branches above and below, Anytime you got a solid anchor, whether it's a natural tree growing out of the ground or whatever, anytime you got a solid anchor, I'm going to use a toggleless. And no matter how hard he pulls, which way he goes, he's all seen stop. So you can see how how that uh, how that is uh, 
get some of these branches out of the way here. Right? It's just the loop. Just past the quick, simple, easy, no toggle required. And it'll work just as good. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Well, When you're not worried about your anchor coming loose or uh, you, you don't need that toggle and, and that's it's actually cinching up pretty tight I can't believe it so uh, no toggle required my my future snares are going to look exactly like this nothing wrong with putting the toggle there but uh, that's one step I don't think that we really truly need depending on how you uh, anchor your your uh, your snares. Now I got 14 toggle snares made up already. I'm going to keep those toggle snares and keep using them. And when uh, the wire is no longer usable, I will do it like this and still use those 14 toggles that I got made. They're made. I might as well use them. So I hope that that answers everybody's question. It was a bad night last night for the rabbits in an area where there's low population. I never cut a single rabbit track. So, what do you guys think of that? Not too bad, eh? And when it's time to remove your snares, all you do is grab that rope. It's a lot easier to, to loosen off without the toggle. Because the toggle is a, is a locking mechanism. When you set it in certain ways, you don't need that locking mechanism. So it's so quick, simple, and easy to, to do. You put the, the loop around the tree. You got branches above and below, you cinch that up. And when the ground is frozen, you can use uh, one of the limbs off of the duck pole as your, uh, as your pinch pole. No having to work into, into the frozen ground. You know, that's a poorly set snare, but you get the idea. And the extra rope there, you can just take that and get it up out of the way type thing like so everything's happy rabbit comes in gets caught pulls that tight it comes out of the whatchamacallit and now the rabbit is on onto the uh, onto the onto the rope and you can't bite the rope because the wire keeps pushing the rope away from them almost you know what I mean like you're gonna want to bite what's closest to them so I, I was concerned about the rabbit chewing off the, the rope, but so far, and I'm not going to say that it won't happen at some point in time, but so far, we haven't had that issue. Just like that. And then when I go to... Uh, store them I just wrap wrap the string around like it there keep my finger out once so I got something to, to pass the loop of the snare true like that and then I'll tighten that up throw that in your pocket and you're good to go good simple easy effective oh yeah and, and uh, finally I'm getting a lot of questions and I think it's people that are not from this province and I'll probably do a video on how we used to set snares. When I started snaring over 50 years ago, we did it two ways. You did your blind trail sets where the wire was tied directly to an anchor stick of, of your choosing. Whether it was a natural tree that grew alongside that rabbit's run, where you pushed a stick into the ground and tied it onto that, whether you had a duck branch that you tied it onto that. So that was a blind set, set on a rabbit's run. I guess we did it three ways because we did the, the birch tip pens. But we also had spring poles and we reused those snares time and time again, year after year. We cut our toggles, we let the toggles dry, we made our proper cuts. I have a video on my channel showing uh, how to make toggles for rabbit snares. And we went from there. But right now here in Newfoundland, because of the Pine Martin, they are 
on the protected list. They used to be endangered. I think now they've went from being endangered to protected. And part of the protection program for the Pine Martin is we are mandated to use seven strand pitcher core, which is a lot weaker than the old pitcher core that we used to use. I can't remember how many strands that had. And or, or uh, 22 gauge brass wire. And we've been getting breakages. I always load my snares. I showed you guys how to load the snares. And by loading the snares and making my eyes the way I do, I got a video on how to load a rabbit snare. Maybe I'll put that in the comments below. But I was getting far less breakages than anybody else. This year I went out to set some snares. I grabbed a new uh, coil of 22 gauge brass wire from the same spot with same supplier that I had it before. The good stuff, right? The supposedly good stuff. And in one night I had two breakages and Josh had one. So that was three breakages and only one saved rabbit for a 75% loss or breakage, right? 25% retention. Now the night before I had caught three and, and saved all three. So, and it wasn't a reuse snare. And I know that the rabbit broke the wire. You see, um, when a rabbit pulls, when you when a rat when a uh, a rabbit pulls at the the height normally that you got the the stake or the snare tied onto, and when that wi wire snaps, it snaps and stays on that plane on which it was broke. If a if a coyote or something comes and gets it, it it will pull upward, and uh, instead of the wire being broke on the plane like this, it'll look like this, or a bear. Right? So, um, that's how I know, and plus, there was no uh, evidence of coyotes being there, right? There was no blood around the snares and running. I know it was a rabbit rig just by the angle that the, it was broken, you know? Um, so, yeah, other than that, and we used to do this a lot because we used to have lynx and, and uh, bears taking our rabbits years ago when we set in the fall, and uh, that was before the coyotes come, you know. So, I hope that clears the, uh, clears it up here on the island of Newfoundland. In Canada, Newfoundland, and the North Atlantic, we are mandated because of the pine martin. We have a different subspecies of pine martin. Our pine martins are actually bigger than the mainland cousins. So, we have to use 22 gauge brass wire. That's why, after over 50 years of snaring, here we are trying to reinvent the wheel. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you gave you gave you a laugh at the intro. And uh, congratulations, Gary. Thank you, everybody who contributed. And uh, yeah, good idea there, Elliot. That was a really good idea. And I'm gonna blame Elwin again but no eh, i thought about it but i really thought that the eye of my snares because I, I have a special tool i use for making up my rabbit snares and perhaps i'll show you just a, a quick little video on how i go about making uh, a, a rabbit snare right and uh, but what it is was an old milk punch dad cut the horn off of a off a moose took a four inch nail drove it in drilled it out and drove it in uh, to the, the moose horn, cut off the end and file it to a point. And that's what I use to, to tie the eyes of my snares. And I thought the eye of my snare would be too small to put that the string that I was using in through a uh, loop-to-loop. So when El Elwin suggested use a fishing knot for the fisherman's snare, I thought, yeah, that's a great idea. But then when I started thinking, this is a one-time use because unless I got enough line left when I, when I snip it off, it's kind of a one-time use using the loop to loop with two loops, I can always change out my snares as needed. Win-win. And the system keeps getting better.